Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. Thank you for all the great feedback on the last episode as we debuted this brand new stadium. It's so nice to finally have this done and to be playing games in it. We got our first action in last episode, and we're continuing on once again in this first homestand. Now, we dropped our first game of this series against the Atlanta Braves, losing 3-1, and we're seeing early on that young reliever Kendrick Haynes has had his struggles. But I wanted to start this episode with Michael Soroka because the first two starts of his season weren't like what we saw last year. They weren't terrible, but walks have been a problem, and he's only gone nine innings over his first two starts. Well... Things didn't get off to the start you were hoping for against the Braves with Michael Harris sending one 20 rows up the right field seats and the Braves take an immediate one nothing advantage. Next up for the Braves, it is Manuel Margot and a line drive into center, a home run, a sharp single. I didn't have a good feeling the way this game began. Then you bring up Ronald Acuna, and he looks at a fastball top of the zone, and Soroka picks up a strikeout. Ozzy Albies follows, and he strikes out on a high fastball as well. Here's our old friend Nick Gordon, and Soderstrom blocks the cutter and throws out Margot at third base, ending the top of the frame. We go to the bottom now. Kyle Wright makes the start for Atlanta. Luisa Rise leads things off and grounds one through the right side. Base hit. We're starting to adjust our batting order as well, and working his way up is Trey Sweeney. Into the gap in right center, Arise flies around second, waved around third, and comes around to score on the RBI double. It's great seeing Trey Sweeney and Tyler Soderstrom hit the way they have to start the year. Next, it's Vladdy, and a chopper on to second will advance Sweeney, and that's followed up by Tyler Soderstrom, and the 1-0 pitch grounded to short. We manufacture the second run and take a 2-1 lead. We move on to the second, and Soroka facing the former A. It's Matt Olson chasing the cutter low for strike three. In the third inning, Miguel Amaya, the nine hitter, sharply grounding to Muncy, a double play. After that first homer given up by Soroka, he really settled in. And Michael Harris with a ground ball to third base, diving stop by Arnaiz. He's an outstanding defender and shows it off there. We move ahead to the fifth inning. Down goes Olsen once again. Soroka in command against his former team. Grounded on to Arnaiz. No run since the opening batter for Atlanta. Still a 2-1 game. Soroka pitching into the sixth. It's Christian Arroyo, another former A from this franchise. And the 3-2 is right down the middle for strike three. Six Ks for Soroka. And make it seven, striking out Miguel Amaya. While Soroka didn't look great in his first two starts, what we have seen so far is an increased strikeout rate, which would be super exciting if that sticks around. Now trying to go high and tight to Manuel Margot, he does end up hitting him, giving the Braves a base runner. And then Acuna sharply laces a base hit to left field, and the Braves put two on with nobody down. Soroka at 83 pitches stays in against the heart of this Braves order. And Ozzy Albies pops one foul. It's Soderstrom for a big first out. But still some work to do. Here is Gordon again. Sent down the line. Juan Guerrero is over. It goes foul. One and two. Lifted for Carlson in right. He makes the play. No test from Margot at second. And that would be it for Michael Soroka. All in all, an outstanding outing. And just trying to keep him in line for a win. Victor Gonzalez enters. Looking for one key out against Matt Olson. 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts and he takes one off the leg. The second batter hit in this inning, loading the bases for Vaughn Grissom. 
by him at 94. There's the fastball from Gonzalez. Gets him to chase a sinker. And 0-2, he goes around for strike three. Out of the seventh. But where's the offensive highlights, you might be wondering? I showed you all of them already. We only had three hits to this point. Only two were even consequential. So we take this 2-1 lead into the ninth. And Alex Reyes has taken on this new closing role this season. He's two for two thus far. Starting off against Acuna. Base hit down the line. And all the way to the fence. We're going to start the ninth inning basically with Acuna at second base. Not an easy situation. Ozzy Albies pops it foul again. Soderstrom out number one. And that makes this sequence a lot more palatable. But Gordon sends one down the line. Barely foul. Reyes 2 struck him out. Soderstrom gets the out at first, but Acuna moves up 90 feet. It doesn't really change much. You get the out here, and it's over. Now, Matt Olson hits in front of Vaughn Grissom, so there was no need to attack him here in the strike zone. We pitched around him. 2-1. We're okay with the walk. Missing inside a 3-1 count. Right on the outside corner. Three and two. Struck him out and Reyes slams the door on Atlanta. It's a two to one win with very little offensive highlights to show you. This was played in my most recent channel member live stream and we hit a lot of lazy fly balls in this game and when I checked out the wind it was blowing in at about nine miles an hour. So there really wasn't a whole lot to show outside of the domination of Michael Soroka and a nice job closing it out. Now, on the last episode, I got some feedback about player lock games and how to get into our stadium. And I appreciate all the feedback I got. I have two solutions now to this problem. If I choose the stadium and act like I'm going to play regularly, once I get to that menu where I choose my pitcher, I can back all the way out then choose player lock, and here we are inside of Athletics Park instead of whatever the heck that stadium was last episode. There is another way too we can do player lock, but I got my strategies here, so we can focus on one player at a time if we choose. How about Aaron Don drawing a walk? And launch to left field! Vladimir Guerrero Jr. It is gone! Second homer in the new building and third overall on the season for Vladdy. However, Atlanta would answer with a trio of runs, so we go bottom five, and Don almost takes out Ian Anderson. Don hasn't hit the ball all that well to this point. He has been a good stolen base threat. Vladdy lines out to end the inning. So we're going to move ahead to the seventh, where we have tied things up, and Don sends one the other way. Let that fastball get deep in the zone. Just hit it hard the other way. It's a two-hit day. And speaking of two hits, here's Soderstrom, two for two. One of our top hitters here early in the season. But he pops this one up, and the third baseman, for some reason, makes the catch on the pitcher's mound. Why don't we go bottom nine? A chance to walk it off for Aaron Don. The game-winning run is at second base. Can he just get another line drive single? No, he looks at strike three, and we go to extras instead. Domingo Acevedo isn't the closer anymore, but he is still going to get a lot of key spots for us. A ground ball by Will Myers gets the first out. It's important to get that first out without allowing that runner to advance. He then strikes out Michael Harris. So we've got two down. And Manuel Margot, see you later! Strike three! Bottom ten, here we come. You'll never see me try this in any other situation. We have the runner at second base. Vladimir Guerrero squaring to bunt. He doesn't bunt. 
Well, now it's a two-strike count. We won't try it again. Lifted to center. And Don will stay put. So he can't advance him to third base, unfortunately. And that'll bring up Tyler Soderstrom. Two for three on the day. High drive and belted to center field. Harris going back. Leaping and can't bring it back. The game is over. A walk-off homer for Tyler Soderstrom. And the first walk-off winner inside of Athletics Park. He is the hottest hitter in the A's lineup to start the season. And what a way to win our first series inside our new home. So he can cross off a couple more milestones. That first series win, first walk-off, feels pretty good. There is nobody in this lineup right now playing better than Tyler Soderstrom, who already has five home runs in ten games. This is not a pace we can expect to maintain, but I've been wanting to see him take the leap to be a true power hitter in this lineup. Are we finally seeing that here in the fifth season of the series? His career high in home runs is 17, and he currently has five. Again, there's going to be some regression. He's not going to hit a home run every 7.8 at-bats. But this is incredible to see. Along with Zach Geloff hitting home runs and playing well. And Trey Sweeney hitting 314. If we're to have a special season, that trio needs to be one of the biggest reasons why. Now, early on, I mentioned I was concerned how many home runs this team would hit. Would we be a good power team or not? We're tied for 7th right now. I don't expect us to be a top 10 home run team. And right now those numbers are really being supported by guys on unsustainable runs and not really just power from all parts of the batting order. But if we can at least be like league average, I think all of our goals are within reach. But I do wonder how powerful really is this lineup. Early on, it's looking powerful enough. But we're going to continue on with our season now. 7-5 and five is our record. And that is good for third place right now in the American League West. We have a road trip starting here against the New York Yankees. And Alex Reyes, bottom nine. We already have one win today with three hits only. Can we do it again? I kind of enjoy spectating some of these critical situations. You know, I love... The thing I always look for in my series is the players having personality. And to me, personality is uh, your strengths and weaknesses and how well you're playing, all that stuff. And it's fun to just sit and watch them play sometimes. I've made an entire channel out of that content, basically, with my football stuff the last five years or so. I don't got to play to have fun with these games, man. But one nothing Athletics, the tying run is at second base. Fouled off by Everson Pereira. Reyes is a clean three of three in save opportunities so far. Missed inside. On the ground, the runner will advance as Muncy gets the second out. And now it all comes down to the nine hitter for New York, Kyle Isbell, who's come over from the Kansas City Royals. Now he's two for three on the day. A base hit will at least extend this game, and Isbell fouls it off the screen. Reyes 0-1, swung on and missed. He's got him 0-2. Holy cow, that score down below. 15 to 10. The 0-2. Grounded. It is through, and the game is tied. On an 0-2 pitch, the 9-hitter gets his third hit of the game. I'm just going to kick back and watch the entire rest of this game. Whatever happens, man. But for Reyes, that's going to be his first blown save of the season. And back to the Yankees, uh, top of their order, Oswald Peraza. He's hitting like a nine-hitter. And the nine-hitter's hitting like a leadoff guy. Nothing makes sense in this upside-down world. One on, two down. What? 
The count is two and two now on Peraza. Missed inside, so Isbell's going to leave early. In the air, left center field, and Don going back, way back to make the catch near the track. So I hope you like extra innings because we're going to do this all over again. And Miguel Vargas, we're going to spend some time talking about him today because... He could be playing himself into a one-way trip to Las Vegas with this start. I cannot keep him in the starting lineup for much longer if it doesn't improve. Scott Efros is the pitcher for New York. And a strike in there on the front door slider. You know, it's so important in extra innings to play good situational baseball. You can't miss this opportunity, and Vargas waves at a slider. Two and two, and he takes the slider away. That's a good take. The payoff pitch from Efros. Looked at it for ball four. So really, this doesn't change a whole lot because it's all about getting that first runner home. Ernais is going to pinch run, so there's some extra speed aboard now. But it's important to advance that runner or score him before you get that first out. And Muncy lays down a good bunt. One down with two in scoring position. And now you get Luis Arise, who is currently 0 for 4 and only hitting 241 on the young season. He's not going to get a chance. Luis Arise has been intentionally walked, which is going to bring to the plate with the bases loaded Aaron Don. 152 average. He's not playing a whole lot better than Miguel Vargas right now. And we need a good at-bat right here. Efros hoping for a double play ball. And that one's low. Ooh, that is the one you've got to turn on there. And Don looks at it. He's under it. Lifted to right. And that's deep enough to... To tag Sweeney. Judge fires home. And the run scores. So you got to at least get that one. And then you set up your best hitter here. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Ooh, good looking numbers so far. He'll face Tim Meza. Can we get that second run home now? Down the middle, strike one. And strike two. We're looking at pitches that I am just like, I want to swing at that one. I would have swung at that. But I would have swung at some other ones that we'll talk about later. Strike three. Why did I say strike three? He fouled it off. What's wrong with me? One and two. And that is strike three. I was just predicting the future is all. Foreshadowing. It's a, uh, you know, it's an old content creator trick. Let's go, bottom 10. Juan Guerrero is going to enter in left field as a defensive substitute. And Alex Reyes? Well, can you blow two saves in one game? Is that even allowed? I, I don't like leaving a pitcher in for the 10th inning. I feel like with a man on, Volpe gets a hold of one. Left field, back end, caught by Guerrero! Tagging up to third base, however, that's... An exciting way to not lose the game, I guess, as Guerrero makes a fantastic play. Oh, boy. I'd walk him. We are pitching to Aaron Judge, I guess. I don't know what the numbers say. Just doesn't feel good to face him here, but ultimately... That's the tying run at third base, not the winning run. So I don't know if that changes the calculus at all. Base hit left field and Guerrero cuts it off. Game is tied as Reyes has essentially blown two saves. Now you bring in Jonathan Hernandez. They gave me multiple updates that he was getting warm. It's probably wore out now. Matt Chapman. I can totally see him going to the uh, the Yankees at some point. I can see that happening like 
2025 or four, whenever Chapman's deals up in uh, Toronto. Swung on and missed. He'll replace uh, Donaldson if they're not still paying him like $30 million a season. 0-2. Oh really hoping Hernandez can give us some more good innings this season. Chased it for strike three. He's got that slider on point. And does he go around there? Yes, he does. By the way, in that game down below, that 15-10 Braves-Tigers uh, game. So remember last year, that Tigers rookie, his uh, Thomas Duarte was his name. He had two homers in there. I think I boosted his potential to like an 87, so he can actually have a chance to be a star with the Tigers. But here we are hoping for an 11th inning. Parada. Come on. Base hit left field. The game is not over yet. Judged a second. Oh, God, I have a bad feeling. It's Seth Beer. Back in the Rockies franchise. Every time I play the D-backs, this guy would have a career day against me. Seth Beer, 1-2, nearly hit him. Judge is going to leave early from second base. 3-2, Seth Beer. Hernandez misses away, loading the bases. Labor Torres with a chance to win it in 10. Hernandez in trouble and down the middle a strike. And he clips the inside. Give him that slider away this time, okay? Blocked by Soderstrom. Popped him up, and Soderstrom is there to force the 11th. I like to remind everybody we only have three hits in this game. Can we get some more, please? Here is uh, Tyler Soderstrom. He's hitless, facing the lefty Meza. So now, who's at second base? We got Vladdy. We can't run Ernais. We can't run Guerrero for Guerrero. Lifted foul, which makes it all the more important that we advance him in this at bat. Struck him out, and Soderstrom is 0 for 5. Here's a guy off to a slow start so far. It's Dylan Carlson. He's 0 for 4 today. Not hitting even 200 right now, but that can help. It's to the gap in right center, and the A's will take the lead. Three to two on the double. Next is Zach Geloff, who's two for four, and they're looking at pitches I like so much. The thing is, though, is I swing it like everything. So I like all the pitches. Grounded, and Meza gathers it in and delivers on to first. Trey Sweeney is 0 for three. Grounded to the right side, and Meza covers. We'll try to get the save again. We can't blow a save three times in one game, right? Well, it's not going to be a save attempt if Hernandez stays in. I just don't like leaving a guy in who's already 22 pitches in with a runner in scoring position. I just think you want to go fresh arm there. Everson Pereira, 8-9-1 up here for the Yankees in the 11th. Stopped by Geloff at third base. What a play for the first out. And that keeps the runner at second. So now the inning is on schedule for us. That is if we can go one, two, three. Isbell three for four. He's due for an out. Fouled off. It's two strikes. How much more does Hernandez have in the tank? Two and two. Struck him out. Right down the middle. He wasn't looking for a slider there. And that's going to leave it all up to Oswald Peraza. Can Hernandez give us two innings and a victory? 
Strike one. Oh, come on. Right on the outside corner. And then just low. The count's two and one that quick. There we go, and that's strike two. Struck him out! Athletics take the game! Three hits is plenty, I tell ya! And we take the first in the Bronx. How about that outing from Jonathan Hernandez? That was outstanding. He's definitely someone we can appear to count on this season. Pretty good outing, too, for Mitch Keller. I feel like he hasn't had too many of those in this series. Oh, he had four hits, by the way. I guess three is not quite enough, but four is. That's a three-game winning streak for the Athletics, and we do, unfortunately, drop the next game five to six. But let's go, Scout. So, I know I did already look at Jesus Madrano, and he has gone up our board a little bit, so he's somebody we'll want to finish the report on at some point. Who else do we got here? Kenny Sparbori from Canada. He's a lefty masher at 5'7", 156. He can run. He might be able to even throw a little bit. Interesting player. We're also going to be scouting third baseman in the West. We have a few really good options here. This is Darren Delahanty, a switch hitter, good contact skills on base and defensive ability. And then I'm also really intrigued here with Guillermo Lantigua, who looks to have just good all around offensive skills and uh, a decent arm. And he's 23, so it is kind of tempting right now to try to get some prospects who are a little bit closer to helping us as we get further along in our rebuild. I've began to make some changes in the bullpen as well. So Kendrick Haynes has had way too many bad outings already to stay at like the top of uh, the bullpen here. So I've just been using this long relief role as basically who do I want to get the most innings right now? And Marshall Lerma's been perfect through seven innings. We've had good stuff so far from Kinley, Jonathan Hernandez, Miller, and Haynes have struggled more so. And then we're getting Gonzalez some more innings as well, and he's still the only lefty we have. So we're still thinking about if we need to make a move there. If we want to bring up a lefty, I don't think Gregorio Uribe is quite ready, although maybe you can play 65 overalls at uh in the bullpen but i'm still trying to develop him and get him a lot of innings so he can hopefully become a key part of our bullpen antonio santiago is somebody else we could consider at some point and then ricky griggs another 69 overall lefty at double a edgar gonzalez is only a 60 he is further out and we got to make some changes in this batting order on a more regular basis. And I think moving Sweeney up to swap with Don is probably the best thing to do here. And then put Geloff over Carlson the way things are going there. Jonathan Hernandez is in there again in extra innings. And the A's take this game from the Yankees. So let's see how this one went down. Another extra inning game. We could use a break from these. Max Muncy hit his first career home run. He's got number one. There we go. Jonathan Hernandez. Three innings this time. It's the very next day as he gets another win. That's incredible. And two scoreless frames for Lerma. We'll wrap up the series here against the Yankees. And it is a split. And then Joe Michael helps us get a win against Tampa Bay, 8-1. Nice to get him some run support in this game. Eight innings, only allowing the one. We beat the Rays again, 13-2 the next day. And now we go bottom nine, and Reyes is looking for another save. And he gets it. Wow, a high-scoring sweep of the Rays on the road. That is exciting. Don has a two for six day in this game, a lot of multi-hit efforts, and a ton of home runs. Miguel Vargas, Daryl Ernais, Denzel Clark all went yard in the same game. That is never going to happen again. And Jonathan Hernandez 
continues to put up zeros on a regular basis. We gave up some more runs in this game. Still come away with a win. Lerma picks up the victory. Reyes suffers his second blown save of the episode. And Waldachuk gave us a really good outing. Oh, man. Luis Estrella. Torn ACL. He's going to be done. Wow. Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't see it really working out. That's tough, man. That low durability. I just worry about what we can do with Miguel Cabrera in this series. His is only 35. Even if it's in the 40s and the 50s, like it's still going to be in the back of your mind. You're going to be worried about it. He's got a ton of potential. And honestly, his bat is already major league ready. But I just don't know, you know, what we can do there. I have both DHing. But clearly, they are still going to be at risk of injury. So you got to add a new DH down here. Man, tearing your ACL while DHing. Just tough. Uh-oh. Joan Duran's trying to close us out in this second game as Soderstrom suffers a strained finger. And we do lose the first two here against the Twins. So Soderstrom's going to miss a day or so. And we unfortunately get swept in our own house. The Twins outplayed us. Joe Michael. Let's see if he gave up all these runs. He gave up four of them at least. Mason Miller gives up three. We had some homers in here. We had four of them, but only five runs. Can we get some base runners? All right, we're going to jump into this series now against the Mariners. We are 12-10 and 10 at the moment. We haven't pitched with Mitch Keller in a long time. Again, we're playing in the new Athletics Park, and we are 12-10 and 10 on the season. No Soderstrom in this one, so Susak's going to play, and, you know, it's probably a little reckless that I don't have another catcher up here that can play just in case. But uh, that would have required sending somebody down. So yeah, Mitch Keller, where is he at in this series? I still think that at some point we're probably going to look to trade him unless we're looking like we're, you know, a team that can contend for a playoff spot. I think that we could get something for Keller. He is a free agent at the end of the season. And some of that's going to depend as he strikes out Lopez. It'll depend if we get a look at anybody else before the deadline. If there is like a, an injured list stint for anybody that's going to bring up a, a Cole Phillips or maybe a Cam Cope. Enrique Zapata is the hitter facing the Mariners again. I think it's our second series of this season against them. Strike two. Good curveball away, but no offer from the rookie. Three and two. And he missed. A man on now for Juan Soto. Only hitting 213 so far. Ah, good pitch. Runner takes off. Strike two on Soto. And Susak throws it too high. Wouldn't have had him anyway. Now at second base, Soto chops it for Muncie for the second out. And that'll bring up Julio Rodriguez. Probably pitch him a little carefully. Ty France is on deck. And we're falling behind Julio 3-1. and one. Fouled off. Right to Muncie, it ends the inning. Nicely done. We go bottom one, and we're facing Luis Castillo. Didn't get many hits earlier in that game against the Braves. We'll see if I can get more than four this time. Luis Arise is hitting 275. And that right now is the third best batting average in the starting lineup. Behind Trey Sweeney and Max Muncie. And that comes in there pretty quick. 
Hopefully I can adjust to his delivery fast in this game. 0-2. Oh, Chopped it up the line. Castillo covering. One down. How is it like we're not even late April and there's already a 14-game difference in the NL West between first and last place? We've barely played 20 games. What's going on over there? It's been a very good start to the year for Trey Sweeney, who is second on the team with 13 RBIs. A full count. And he walks him. Our first base runner. And that'll bring up Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who has five homers now, tied for the lead on the team with Tyler Soderstrom. Sent the other way, but foul. I want to see a righty go up over that right field wall. I think Vladdy's one of the only guys we could uh, expect to do that for us. 0-2. Oh, oh. You're expecting anything but a perfect pitch to hit there. You know what we're going to do here? Send the runner. Lifted right field. Geloff is under it. And it's the final out. Couple quick strikes here to tie France as we get the top of the second underway. And now France is showing a lot more plate discipline than I expected. Three and two, it misses inside. There we go, getting ahead of Cal Raleigh here quickly. And he looks at strike three. It was either take that strike or hit into a potential double play. Base hit scorched to right from Evan White. Two on for Seattle. Out in front. Good slider from Mitch Keller as he gets ahead in the count. We'll throw that low sinker again. And this one gets through. Vargas comes up throwing, but they will not wave the runner, and the bases are now loaded. We're seeing Keller get to these two strike counts, but struggling to put hitters away. And that time he just missed up with a pitch that we wanted down. In the air to right field, and past Carlson. Going to be trouble here with two runs coming around, and two still on base. Still only one out in the inning. Trying to keep any more from scoring. He didn't bite, and we've got a 3-2 count. Got him looking. There's two we really need to get this final out and avoid facing Soto here in this inning. I need that strike. And he fouls it off. So we've got a 1-2 count on the rookie Zapata, who lets the slider go. He took a walk in that first at-bat. Strike three. They got some damage done off Keller, but could have been worse. Let's hope we can get some offense going, though, in this game if it's already 2-0. Good pitch there, fouled off by Muncy. He's swinging a hot bat right now. Got his first home run. Had a 4-for-5 day recently as well. Into right center field, and it's caught. We're going to need someone in the bottom of this order to step up soon. We need to get more offense out of this outfield, man. Carlson hasn't been great. Don and Vargas are struggling. The outfield is kind of holding us back right now. Can Aaron Don start to pick up the slack? I see Vargas has brought his average up. It was in the low 100s, so 191 is a recent improvement. Don's only hitting 182. 
That one is scorched into right, and Don's got a hit. Definitely interested in running here, but we'll see if they pitch out. Swung on and missed. Don is safe at second base. And now he's got five on the season. Not bad. Vargas now hoping to find some space somewhere. In the air and sent to center field where Rodriguez takes care of it. Inning over. Popped up Julio Rodriguez. Hoping to see a faster inning out of Keller and he's already gotten Soto and Rodriguez in a handful of pitches. Yeah, this isn't going to be a deep outing though if he's already in the 60s. This is a little much and we're not getting any calls here. It is a 3-0 count to tie France. And he hasn't had a 1-2-3 inning yet. That'll bring up Cal Raleigh. Falling behind in the count. Keller trying to put him away. The 0-2. How'd it end up out there? Strike three looking, but his command has just not been very good. But we move on to the bottom of the third inning now, and Daniel Susak will pick up a couple starts while Soderstrom recovers. And that's lined to right for an out. A 3-0 count here for Trey Sweeney as we try to get another base runner. Sweeney already took a first inning walk. Green light there, fouled back. And now one in the air to right field. And it is over the glove. Sweeney hustles his way to second base. And he's in there. He gets our second hit of the game. That was just out of reach, it looks like. So the inning is continued now for Vladimir Guerrero. We looked at a really good strike three in the first at-bat. And we'll hope to avoid the same. We got some MVP chance in the crowd right now. But an 0-2 count. All right. He might throw a fastball down the middle here. He might. Pulled over to third base. Inning over. I wouldn't say Keller's been bad in this start. He just hasn't been very sharp. Like, he's leaving a lot of pitches in dangerous locations. He's getting weak contact in a lot of cases. He's gotten a few strikeouts. But it might just be a four-inning day for him. Lineup's going to turn over soon. We'll see what happens in the fifth and beyond. Yep, curveball right to Don. Don't pull a Vargas. What I think happens there in the outfield is that the lower the fielding skills, it almost seems like, you know, when you get close to the ball and the character starts to animate their way into making the play, it feels like you've got to get closer to the right point with worse fielders than you do with better fielders. Is that a thing in this game? Geloff's under this one and skies a slider into left center field. Castillo isn't really messing around. A lot of fastballs just trying to make us hit the ball, basically. Like he's challenging us up and in. He's going to say my fastball is good enough. It's better than Joe Michaels. One and two from Castillo. Fouled back a good slider. And now in the air, Muncie... Flies out to Rodriguez. So we've got Tyler Kinley getting warm now as Keller comes out for the fifth inning. And his energy is definitely low. 10-15 pitches is ideal right now. Might not let him face Soto again. Lopez foul down the left field line. Grounded for Sweeney, and Geloff dives in front of him. 
but better off missing the ball anyway. Zapata for Carlson. An easy play, and now Soto. Decent pace to this inning. I feel okay giving him one more hitter. 80 pitches in for Mitch Keller. Fouled off by Soto. Nobody in the Mariners' bullpen with Castillo cruising. That miss, that's a ball. We're hoping we don't have to use our bullpen quite yet. Down the line and foul. One and two. Ball. He forgot how to play catcher for a moment there. That was kind of strange. Two and two. Hammered into the seats. That... Don't see too much action out there. I've thrown too much low. I got to switch it up now. Three and two. This is the last batter that Keller's going to face. Let's just get Kinley fully warm. I'm going curveball here. Three and two. Struck him out. Saved his best for last. And we're through the fifth with Keller. Well, one of our hits off of Castillo was courtesy of Aaron Don. He's up again. No, that's in. And now he hits it on the ground, and the shortstop, Rivas, makes the play. I feel like we're getting good pitches to hit, and in many cases, we are hitting the ball hard. Vargas, again right at Rivas. You know, we're getting really good pitches to hit, and we're not doing much with them, but all these quick at-bats is leaving Castillo plenty of energy to continue pitching, so it, it hurts, you know, double there. We can't hit him, and we're not making him throw a lot of pitches, so he's not going to get out of here anytime soon. So we've just got to find a way to get a couple hits together. Three and two to Susak. We have gotten some two out production. Susak, full count. And a fly ball to center field. And Rodriguez puts it away. So another game where the A's offense is running a bit cold. We have seen guys like Soderstrom, Geloff, cool off a bit, you know, since I, I simulated those series against the Rays and the Twins. They haven't been hitting home runs. The averages have been falling there. And the regression was expected. But now you're not seeing enough, uh, you know, from guys like Don make up the difference. So Tyler Kinley is now in the game. And Julio Rodriguez is 0 for 2. Strike 2 for Julio. And the payoff pitch, another good slider that he gets a piece of. He's seen that a couple times. Change up low, ball four. In the air and down the line. Deep and foul towards the pool. Ty France almost doubled the Mariners' lead. He went around, says the first base umpire, and that will be the first out for Kinley. Wait a minute. JT Ginn strikes out 10, allows no runs, and lost to Giants. The Rockies can't give him run support. That's low, that's a ball. So JT Ginn's had himself a good start. At least he's playing and playing well. Don can't get there. Rodriguez had to uh, wait and see. And now the noodle arm throw allows the runner to get to second base. Should have just hit the cutoff there. Don has no business throwing to third base in most cases. Could have had first and third. Now two in scoring position. Evan White the batter. Rodriguez will score on that. And that was a potential double play ball. So we just got to play a smarter game there. I got to be smart with our outfielders. 
There's a lot of ways you can screw up a game with bad defenders. Got him looking, so we get through the inning, but the Mariners make it three to nothing. And it was already hard enough being down two versus Luis Castillo. Base hit right field. We get started now with a leadoff hit. Nice to get that base runner before we got two outs. So a rise is aboard, and that brings up Sweeney. Our division is very tight right now, and from first to last place, there's only three games of separation. We've got a really competitive American League West, and only more competitive with the A's starting to make a little noise. 0-2 on Castillo, or on Sweeney, and that was at the moon. On the ground and rolled the second base. Double play. Guerrero hitting 2-1. And missing away is Castillo. I feel like he's lost a little bit of his command, and there's been a few more pitches to look at. So a 3-1 count to Guerrero, and he walks him. Geloff trying to make something happen now with two down. We've drawn a few walks in this game. And now... Geloff swings through a slider. Right back up the middle. Castillo makes the play, and we are through six. Still can't get on the board. We're going to bring in Jonathan Hernandez, who is on fire right now. He deserves all these innings. He's been phenomenal. You never know with relievers what any year is going to bring you. You really can't take it for granted. You also can't get too caught up in one bad season on a guy. Two in a row, now you got yourself a problem. But it just kind of seems, you know, in real life and in the show, I've seen this many times where it looks like two different players from one year to the next. Lopez grounds to Sweeney, and before you know it, there's two down. In there to Zapata. He could use a quick outing here. He's had some three-inning outings and some really long appearances. See you later. What a clean seventh inning for Jonathan Hernandez. Last year, I was afraid to put him in the game unless it was like a seven-run difference either way. What a difference a year makes. Bottom seven, Castillo's at 79 pitches. He is out of gas. We'll see what happens. We got to get a run. Ball. Up the middle. And played behind the bag. He got him at first. I thought that was getting through. Three hits for the A's. What is it with three hit games? I'm sick of it. Hammered to right. Carlson way, way back. We're on the board. And we no longer have three hits. Carlson's third of the season. And Castillo's day will be done there. A great outing. And now we'll hand off to Chris Flexen, who's been very good this season. But it is nice to get a fresh pitcher in there. And we'll see if we can get the rest of these runs we need. Dawn goes after the high slider and just puts it in foul ground. Trying to jump on one of those. You know, it's going to take the right pitch to hit one out with Dawn. Something left up that can be turned on. Now, Vargas has hit the ball hard in this game. I've enjoyed the at-bats with him. He's just gotten rather unlucky. A fly out and a line out to this point. Ooh, out in front. If that's Castillo's slider, I think we hit it. But it's a little slower. Got him. Strike three. Hernandez, with as well as he's played... He is staying in. I feel more comfortable with him than anybody else right now to face Soto and 
Rodriguez. And on two pitches, he gets Soto. They've had some interesting success with relievers in this series. You look at Acevedo as a slow one sneaks through for Rodriguez. But Acevedo was a great closer for three years. He was an all-star. And then you look at us with Alex Reyes. And that's a huge success story. Jonathan Hernandez now off to a tremendous start. Rodriguez goes. Base hit into right center. Rodriguez to third. He might not stop there. Heading home to score. Man, just put it in the perfect spot to the perfect outfielder. A base hit scoring him from first base. Just the second run allowed this year for Jonathan Hernandez. You barely feel comfortable placing the blame on him with that. Sometimes a guy gives up a run and you're like, yeah, this guy stinks. That's not the case here in this outing. Over Geloff. What is going on, man? Two... So they had two singles in this inning of 67 and 77 exit velocity. We're going to leave him in. One down still. Quickly getting ahead of Evan White. Putting the pieces back in place. Strike three. Hammered to left center, Taylor back and gone. It's going to be four charged to Jonathan Hernandez in this inning. And I feel awful about it because he did not pitch bad enough to give up four runs, man. Not typical four runs. Oh, man. We start off the eighth inning by drawing a walk. But it's not looking good with us down by six. Going to left center. Arise has a hit. Maybe we can chip away and make it interesting. Not going to wave Susak. We will have two aboard with nobody out. Sweeney already has, I think, 14 RBIs on the year. 13. So a chance to get a couple more. But behind 0-2. Well, that was the pitch I wanted. A little in front. 73. It's hard to be ready for 73 after seeing 80-plus pitches from Castillo. Three and two to Trey Sweeney. All we can do is try to get some base runners and hit the ball hard. Three and two. Right side. Susak stayed put, so we don't even score. And popped up by Guerrero, so two outs in the eighth. Doesn't seem to be our day offensively. Geloff with two down will hit. And an ugly swing there is going to end the inning. One player who could be sent down soon is Kendrick Haynes. He's had many outings lately where he hasn't gotten, you know, through it without allowing a run. He was inconsistent last year, and he really made the team out of spring training this year because he had a good spring, and we needed someone. We needed more players, basically. Like, I wanted to fill those internally. But to this point, Haynes has been disappointing. So although we're down six right now, and this is probably not a consequential outing, I still want to get the outing in with Haynes and get a look at him for uh, another game. He will face Juan Soto with two down. He's got him. One, two. Hard to get him to chase, though. Won't do it often. Three and two to Soto. In the air for Dunn. And Haynes will put up a zero. Oh. 
That was a nasty pitch. And that one struck us out. We got a base runner. Guerrero took a hit. Hey, he can advance now. And Don sends one, and it's played up the middle. He reaches on an infield single. Thought that was going to get through and score a run, but it's a multi-hit day for Aaron Don, at least. Vargas in the air and out to center field. That will score a run. Oh my! Susak delivers deep to left and it's gone! The A's are now down three in the ninth inning. Now they bring in Penn Murphy with two outs. We're down three. And it's pulled over to second base. Now the game is over. Mariners win it 7-4 to four as our skid continues. I believe that's our fourth consecutive loss at home. We do end up winning the next day, though, so that streak is over, and we're going to finish out our episode today at 13-11. and 11. We need some more time to see how this season unfolds to really know who we are as a team. One thing I liked seeing, though, today is Miguel Vargas... He did improve his numbers. So he came into the episode hitting around 100. I thought he'd be sent down here pretty soon. He's been hitting better. He hit the ball hard in today's game we played. I'm not going to make a move immediately. We'll wait it out a little bit longer. But before we get wrapped up today, why don't we go down the AAA and just take a look at some numbers. Of course, Miguel Cabrera's incredible offense is going to stand out. He is, as I keep saying, major league ready with the bat in his hands. Is it worth it? And would it potentially be a good option for a guy like Cabrera who can't play every day reliably, who has had injuries? Would it actually be good for him to be a bench player for a while and to get the occasional start? Is that actually what's best for him long term to make a major league impact? Avon Melendez is also playing well here in the first half. 10 RBIs already in 18 games. Josh Baez is hitting 299. He has mashed six home runs, basically doing exactly what we wanted to see from him with this demotion. Kevin Smith is also playing pretty well, so if there's ever an injury in the infield, he is kind of the first guy up at this point. J.J. Blade is also playing well, so... There's a lot of guys to pick from in the outfield. Uribiel Angelis. He's kind of similar to Daryl Ernais, where I think defense is going to be his calling card, and he's a contact first guy, but Ernais is better. And down at double A, you've got, of course, Luis Estrella, unfortunately injured after a good start to the season. But we also have Yusniel Cruz hitting 341. He's gotten hot. No homers, but... Still getting extra base hits, still reaching base a lot, and putting together a productive start to his professional career. Well, that is going to do it for this episode, everybody. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. Please leave a like if you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you all in the next one here as we continue Year 5 with the Oakland A's. Have a great day.